that was just an incredible election season. Yeah. I can't believe it just came to a close, especially on, on, on such a note as that one. I am still a little bit stunned. I mean, after 18 months of campaigning, we've reached this conclusion, you know? It, it doesn't seem real. It seems it seems like it was the, the season finale for the election and nothing <laughs> went as planned. Everything it was left on a cliffhanger. All right, let's let's talk about it. This is What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. All right, so let's start talking about this election. So first of all, if you've, if you've been living under a rock in a cave, uh, if you've been in Canada for all this time... If you've been hiding under your bed for the election process... <laughs> then something incredible happened that pretty much no one predicted. I would even say that even the victors didn't predict this. Oh, but no. They were not... I, I would say they weren't expecting this at all. Trump comfortably won the election. He won the he won the electoral vote. I think I just I was looking at it and I think he got over 300. Last time I checked some of the votes were still being counted, but it's somewhere in like 306. So it's clearly yeah. even though it was a close election, uh it, Trump did comfortably win, but he didn't win the popular vote, which is of course going to spur a, a spur a whole new argument on the topic of the oh, electoral yes. college. I mean, th- this has only happened, what, four, four times, including this, in the nation's history, you know? Yes, but the last time it happened was 2000. The time before yeah. that was 1888. And so it's very surprising that this can happen 16 years apart. It's it, it, Never before have people happened. I, I mean, people haven't really had it happen two times in their lifetime, and now it's only been 16 years. It's kind of incredible, I think. Yeah. Well, this was an incredible election. This- the... And and we could we could talk about the Senate and House of Representatives. The, oh yeah. The, yeah, the polls on that shot on that side were showing that the Democrats were the favorite for the night, and then the Republicans ended up winning that ticket as well. Although uh, I will give credit to five thirty eight because they did give basically a, a a coin toss. Yes, I think last episode we we made some predictions. They were kind of soft predictions. We didn't just say that they were going to happen. Yeah, we said that it was likely to happen. One of the things we said was that we thought Hillary Clinton was going to win, and we named proposals, pr- propositions that were going to pass. Now, I have to say that we did pretty well in terms of the number of predictions we got correct. We only missed one, and that was yeah, the presidency. That was the only the most important one, you know? Right. Not in, our, in our defense, though, virtually every poll, every national poll had Hillary leading. Yeah, every... the polls just missed it. The yeah, yeah, the polls missed it. The 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 betting sites missed it. People were betting on on Hillary Clinton eighty five to fifteen. Well, they were betting on the polls, and the polls were wrong. I mean, pundits were basing their predictions off the polls. All of this sort of goes back to the fact that our polling system didn't adequately represent this election, and that's pretty extraordinary. Usually, the polls are pretty accurate. The the polls have been accurate. In 2008, in 2012, the polls were very accurate. You said, you mentioned 538, which I now have a new respect for 538, because although it was technically wrong about this election, it was more reasonable than any other site that I looked at. Yeah. It gave Donald Trump a 30% chance of winning. Which is the same chance the Cubs had of winning the World Series, keep in mind. Wow, so two in, two incredible things. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I like that, that that just kind of lined up. But I just have to talk about my new respect for 538. Just just a moment. Like, I, I need to go into this. Oh. Huffington Post claimed a 98% chance okay, are of we really Clinton Are we victory. really going to say Huffington Post is the most reliable source for election coverage? No, but uh, the, the guy who runs it, I, f- I forget his name, but he does have a PhD in political science. That, just, that means he doesn't, he's not just a pundit. For some reason, okay. for some reason, even he was, I mean, it's Huffington Post. Obviously, I understand <laughs> there's a liberal bias there. But he was predicting 98% chance. The fact that he was so spectacularly wrong it demonstrates something. I mean, even even top political scientists in the field weren't even didn't have a clue. Yeah, and the Senate race was an absolute blowout. So was the House. I mean, the, the, we have a fully Republican government now. Yes. And, and that's we, going to be very interesting to see. And there's a vacancy in the Supreme Court, so we're likely going to have a Republican Supreme Court. And we're likely going to have two more Republican Supreme Court justices after this. It's not a stretch to say that we're going to see Republican conservative policies within the next four years 
uh, it's it's going to be more powerful than liberal policies we saw during the last eight. Yeah. Because Obama, of course, faced gridlock. Trump is not. Republicans do not face gridlock. So what's to come, really? Uh, what what do you think is is next in this election cycle? Because a lot of people that told me that they were going to vote for Hillary, they they just thought Hillary had it in the back. They didn't expect. Uh, I mean, the the front page of the front page of New York Times said that this was a Dewey defeats Truman for the modern day. Yeah. And so now no. that now that Truman is won, now that Trump has won, <laughs> yeah. what do you think is next? What's what will Trump propose? Um I don't I don't think Trump is going to be making any radical proposals on his first day in office. I think he's going to try to keep the nation sort of on on point. Because I mean, look at what he's done after he won the election. After he won the election, he went out, made a very gracious speech about winning, complimented Hillary Clinton, tried to keep it sort of bipartisan in a sense. And then <laughs> he he met with uh, Obama. They both complimented each other. Of course, that's politics. But it shows that Donald Trump is not as bombastic in office as he was on the campaign trail. He wants to keep the nation together. And I want to remind you that this has been true during the entire election. I think for some people, when they first saw Trump's concession speech, they they probably believed he was a changed man, but in reality, I I think it's safe to say that that's that's pure strategy. No, he yeah, he strategy. hasn't he hasn't changed his mind on anything. Most likely, in fact, he did this when Ted Cruz lost. He did this when Marco Rubio lost. He immediately once they lost. In fact, there's some clips of him uh, having an interview, and then they they tell him breaking news. Did you did you know Ted Cruz dropped out? He immediately switches. Yeah. He says, "I congratulate Ted Cruz on the loss." He, well, so obviously, I, th- I think he he goes after people, right? But I, I I don't think him going after someone means he dislikes them. I also I, think some of the some of the mean things he was saying about the other politicians, especially the nicknames: Little Rubio, Low Energy Jeb, Lying Ted, and of course, as as we all know, Crooked Hillary, Lying Crooked yeah. Hillary. I think some of that he doesn't believe it. In, I mean, he doesn't truly believe it. He, he he's, says he's it, taking a small grain of truth and just really exploding it to a massive proportions. He's hyperbolizing all of their flaws, and he knows he's doing that. Right. Well, for example, there's there was a 2012 video that surfaced that uh, it showed Donald Trump congratulating Hillary Clinton, sh- saying that she has done an excellent job as Secretary of State. So that type of man isn't one who really believes that she's lying crooked Hillary. You could say he's changed his mind, but the fact he can switch like this means he doesn't really have anything against them. He was just doing it for political reasons. And that's another very interesting thing about this election. In past elections, we've, or or at least in past elections of the past, you know, the decade or so, we've had sort of a basic idea of what the candidate wanted to do. But Donald Trump's proposals have always been really out there, really, um, you know, big changes. And now it seems like he's switching center. He's switching to just right of center. So it seems... Well, this is kind of the opposite of what I believed. So some people are saying that the reason why Trump won was because he had strong proposals. And I mean, as an example, he hasn't changed his view that he's going to build the wall. If, If you're looking at it from a political strategy point of view... Even even if you if you had no point of view, I mean, if you had uh, no perspective, no uh, opinion about immigration, it seems like someone who's proposing to build a wall is just inherently a stronger candidate than says than someone who just says we need reform well, because yeah. that's what Hillary Clinton was saying. It's on, a real on just thing. About everything, and, and this is this is one of the things. Uh, I mean, Hillary Clinton on health care, she said we will reform. Trump said, we will repeal Obamacare. One is a concrete idea. The other is a vague concept of moving toward the future. Well, that's that's what I was saying. He has strong radical proposals, right? But I'm not so sure he's going <laughs> to execute all of them. Like uh, the ban of Muslims entering the United States. Which, he's, which by the way, has, has changed. Yes. Yeah. In that sense, he has changed. But that was before the election that's closed. True, that's true. That's true. I... I, I'm just pointing out he's very good at pivoting when he needs to, so I'm not so sure we know exactly what his presidency will be like. Which I think that's that's really demonstrated that he is a masterful politician. I think one of the greatest ways that Trump shocked the world was the fact that he was able to use non-traditional strategies to his benefit. 
he understood exactly how to appeal to people and knew exactly when to when to pivot in his campaign. He knew exactly where to campaign. For example, he campaigned in Michigan. He campaigned in Wisconsin. All of which both states were showing a strong Hillary Clinton win right before the election. But he, for some reason, had the intel. I mean, he knew that they he should campaign there. I don't. I don't know how, honestly, how he was able to put together such an excellent campaign. Uh, well, I think it has a lot to do with him understanding and seeing something that a lot of other politicians weren't seeing. And that's that the middle, middle America is really fed up with, um, you know, regular politics as usual. They don't want a regular candidate in the White House. They want someone who's radical. They want someone who doesn't represent the establishment that they feel has wronged them for the past decade. Which, I think you could even see this in Obama. Obama was, the, I mean, his campaign was changed. Hillary Clinton's motto, stronger together, in contrast to uh, keep moving forward, one of them is about changing the way things are and, and moving in a direction. The other is simply standing together united. I don't, I think it speaks to what, uh, people want things to be different. And I think... not. They don't just want a candidate. That's something that pundits and polls kept missing. Hillary Clinton lost he lost in 2008 to Obama in the primaries, and she lost again to Donald Trump in the election. I mean, it clearly people don't want by the books politicians anymore. If you give them an option, they will choose the extreme change candidate. Which I, I hear a lot of people saying anymore. Now, obviously, I don't have I don't have that great of a historical perspective. I'm not a historian. But I think it's, I think it's more to do with human nature. I think inherently people don't want to elect someone that just, that just talks about things without having concrete proposals that will change things. Because the thing is, when you give, when you give someone, uh, when you give someone a proposal like we will reform healthcare, then you're not thinking of anything in your head. People vote based on how they think their lives will be changed. Right. And when they heard things will be reformed, they didn't imagine any specific thing in their head that would be changed. They just imagined a, a different country, so maybe an idealistic vision. Whereas for Trump, they're definitely, they're, they're, it's, it's imagery. They're imagining, imagining at the border for his wall idea. They're imagining the Great Wall of China. It's an image that they put in the heads that can inspire action. And, and that's, and I, I mean, I think it's fair to say not everyone who voted for Trump fully supports his policies. I think there there were definitely a a good portion, not a majority, but a good portion of Trump votes that were just discontent votes. They wanted someone in the White House who wasn't like Hillary Clinton, who wasn't a by-the-books politician who wanted to get in the White House and basically keep the status quo. It was a vote against the status quo for, uh, I mean, at least some amount of the people. And I, I would also like to point out some bias in discussing why Trump won. So one of the things is that since Trump lost by the popular vote, that actually means that he, he didn't run a strong enough campaign to convince the majority of Americans. No. In fact, the number of votes that Hillary Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump got were fewer than both Mitt Romney and Obama and McCain and Obama. Keep that in mind. So part of the election was not the fact that Trump was able to inspire. So it, even though we're talking about how Trump was a masterful politician, he still did worse in raw numbers than McCain and Mitt Romney. But part of his strategy, part of what makes it an excellent strategy, is that he was able to encourage, or at least in part with Hillary Clinton, he was able to encourage voter apathy in such the right way so that Hillary Clinton would just miss out on the required states. And yeah. so even though she won by a majority and the most of Americans wanted her, even though that's true, Trump ended up ended up being the victor in the end. Yeah. And I think, again, that says a lot about middle middle America, you know, I mean, he him being able to sort of cause this this shift, you know, this shift in a lot of states that traditionally went Democratic he was able to bring those voters out that don't usually go out and change around um, areas that don't usually vote Republican. And even though he didn't get the majority vote, the places he got the vote in all have pretty high 
proportionality of uh, votes mattering. You know, someone's vote in California does not matter as much as someone's vote in, in any swing state, you know? And, of course, one thing that was n- not not Hillary Clinton's fault, necessarily, or Donald Trump's fault, but Hillary Clinton could not get that minority block. Uh, no. She, even though... Even though minorities overwhelmingly did vote for her, it was not the turnout that was expected, nor was it the turnout even close to what Obama got, which I think is I think is pretty obvious why that would be. But it shows that having the first woman president is not as powerful as having the first black president, because the first black president was able to inspire people, the first woman president... I guess it wasn't enough. I mean, it did, it didn't it didn't inspire well, you, some people. You have to remember Barack Obama ran on change. Hillary right. Clinton was not running on change. Barack Obama was either running on his past uh his past accomplishments or he was running on changing the status quo. Of course, I'm only talking about the fact that we if if people were really inspired and were voting uh for Hillary Clinton simply because she was a woman which was i mean in all fairness it was a complaint that people mm-hmm. had about Hillary Clinton that that people were just voting her based on that uh but i don't think it was enough uh i i think it wasn't as powerful as the type of minority support that obama got and as an analog it wasn't Hillary Clinton didn't get enough of the woman vote no. just not she didn't convince w- uh, women that she was she was the one to represent them. And also, I mean, while we're speaking about mistakes Hillary Clinton made during the campaign, um, I think when after such a strong Bernie candidacy, you know, Bernie Sanders really swept the primaries in a way nobody thought he would. Right. After he lost, she didn't really make concessions to that um, block of the vote. She kept going with the message she was having. She said she had met with Bernie Sanders and she was considering his proposals. But there wasn't any real weight behind what she was saying. And once once again, there wasn't supporters. there wasn't anything concrete. No, when 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 Bernie Sanders said, "I will have a universal health care system," that was a that was resonating. That yeah. was an image in people's minds. Once again, it was just like Trump's proposals, and that made Ber- Bernie a strong politician in that sense. But then Hillary Clinton didn't pick up on it. And I think I think uh, even I would say some Bernie voters went and voted for Trump or didn't vote at all, which really hurt Hillary Clinton's uh, ca- candidacy for the president because she the, the the Bernie vote was a big block of the Democratic Party. I mean, a, a large chunk of at least primary voting Democrats were voting for Bernie Sanders. So <clears throat> if she had gotten even half more of the Sanders vote than she got, she may have actually been able to turn the presidency around. Absolutely. I I think it's also, I think it's also fair to uh, put part of the blame on the Democrat side on democratic arrogance. Obviously, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, she stepped down, of course. I mean, that was the controversy. But the fact that the DNC was so confident that Hillary Clinton was the correct uh, candidate that they would try to sway the election unfairly really, really spoke to how arrogant they had become Yeah, because they didn't believe that someone like Trump could actually uh, could actually convince Americans. And I think it, it definitely showed a disconnect because there was some type of echo chamber in, in the media. There was some type of echo chamber in, in liberal politics where it was resonating around. I could I could see it in late time show hosts. I could see it in newspapers. Yeah. Almost, I mean, all the top newspapers endorsed Hillary Clinton. All these celebrities endorsed Hillary Clinton. Everyone thought that if you, I mean, all the liberal politicians thought that if you voted for Donald Trump, you must be an idiot, bigot, racist, sexist. And it 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 it, do, it, didn't it wasn't work. enough. It wa- you cannot call someone a bigot, racist, and a sexist and expect them to change their point of view. It, it you tr- have to treat them like reasonable people. It turned out that insulting the the base was not a good strategy. No, and I mean we saw this we we saw this on the campaign trail when Hillary Clinton said that uh, Trump supporters half of them were a basket of deplorables. For some reason. That was a hu- bigger news event than all of the insults that Donald Trump has spewed. And the reason why was because, I mean, I, I will say some of it is a double standard. I, I will yeah. put that forward. But I think the reason why is because it was Hillary Clinton insulting supporters, whereas it was Donald Trump s- insulting 
politicians. Yeah. That was the difference. I think that had something to do with the polls. Because it's been... People were so alienated for being Trump supporters, they probably didn't want to check that box. They, yes. They, there was a stigma against um, saying you were for Donald Trump, even saying you were for him. In, and that really swayed the election, unfortunately, against Hillary Clinton. Well, unfortunately for Hillary Clinton, fortunately for Donald Trump. <laughs> right. In the United Kingdom, there's a similar uh, theory, and that it is that when pollsters, when people are being asked whether they support a conservative candidate, they're, they're shy about it. It's, it's called the shy Terry hypothesis. And, and basically, it says that since the media is overwhelmingly controlled by liberals, since college universities are overwhelmingly controlled by liberals, the business class, the, 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 the elites in, in big, big cities are overwhelmingly liberal, it means that people are afraid to speak up. Because even yeah. though even though they might be in the masses, which that was what Donald Trump, I mean, excellent job appealing to the the silent majority. That yeah. was, I mean, people all of were his, mocking him for it, but people he were was mocking right. Him. Well, I mean, in a technical sense, it wasn't because he did lose the popular vote once okay. again. But but he, in, in he a won more, a much he won many more votes than people thought he would. In in a more figurative sense, it, he was appealing to the right type of people because even though all these people wanted to vote for Trump, but the business class, the liberals mock them enough so that they apparently didn't get reported in the pollsters yeah. and, and they didn't they didn't get a significant amount of coverage and i think this has to do with an increasingly polarized america you know i mean i think <clears throat> I, I mean i was watching the uh colbert not the colbert report but uh, i was watching stephen colbert's um speech about um about this election after it was unclear whether donald trump or hillary clinton would win and he, he, he made a really good point about how something like 54% of Democrats are fearful of Republican policies and 49% of Republicans are fearful of Democratic policies. I mean, we, we are dividing so much as a nation. It's becoming a stigma who you're voting for. And I, I think one of the, one of the things you mentioned, uh, Colbert, I think he was citing a Pew Research study. Yeah. And I, we've been, we've talked about this. I mean, we must have. I, 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 I'm sure, I I'm we sure have. we have. But the polarization, the Pew, Pew Research has talked about how more and more Americans over time are now solely identifying as liberal or conservative. Yeah. And this election could not do that any good. Regardless, I mean, I would say the same thing if Hillary Clinton won. Oh, I yeah. would say probably the same thing if Bernie won. And now that Trump's won, at one, I can I can say definitively with, with confidence that America is going is more polarized. America is going to be more polarized, and it's only going to get worse in that sense based on the traje yeah. trajectory we have right now. I think 2018 and 2020 are going to be very interesting. I I don't think this is going to be the last political episode of what really matters after after well, the big shakeup. The thing is, I, I I think we are both willing to admit this, that if Hillary Clinton won, we wouldn't really want to do any more political additions because that no. was what was expected. And Hillary Clinton, in a way, she denied it, but in a way, she would just be like continuing Obama and it wouldn't be anything unusual. No, but with a Trump presidency, there's a lot to think about. I mean, his, his policies, are he basically ran on undoing the last eight years of yes. our of our nation's history so and of course a, a maxim is that it's easy to revolt but hard to govern we're going to have to see whether that's true with yeah. donald trump traditionally uh big change candidates like donald trump haters of the establishment now he had now he is the establishment and he has to prove himself to he, everyone else he has to prove he's a better establishment than the last one all right well, this, this has been uh, What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. See you next week. Mm -hmm.